Before I can move on with this short video, I got to address the people at YouTube or the AI robots or whoever is responsible uh, for identifying restricted content and banning videos. Um, let's be clear, this video is not about election fraud. It is not about election fraud. I won't be speaking about that forbidden topic and I won't be providing any form of evidence or information uh, regarding that forbidden topic. And because I understand that my opinions are illegal and could potentially be influential if I were allowed to share them. Uh, so yes, to the people or robots of YouTube, um, I wholeheartedly agree that we need to silence every voice that goes against the media endorsed narrative regarding, you know, life as we know it. And I agree that people should not be allowed to hold any views that don't conform to the status quo, you know, much less express them. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean, Thank you for protecting my stupid viewers from the potential threats that would be presented if I were actually permitted to speak freely, uh, because that might actually influence somebody to change their mind, you know? And maybe I would accidentally say something that would even resonate with a viewer. And obviously that would be a terrible thing here in the land of the free. Uh, so again, thanks YouTube uh, for protecting us from ourselves. Um, and please don't delete this video because as you can see, I'm totally on board here. Uh, I'm really willing to abandon my own opinions and to acquiesce to the philosophies of this new normal, you know, because I want to be a good citizen. Okay, now with that out of the way, take a look at this. Okay, and I'm just gonna read this YouTube. Okay, so again, please don't delete this video. Um, I'm only going to read your own literature out loud. Okay, yesterday was the safe harbor deadline for the U.S. presidential election, and enough states have certified their election results to determine a president-elect. Given that, we will start removing any piece of content uploaded today or any time after that misleads people by alleging that widespread fraud or errors changed the outcome of the 2020 U.S. presidential election, in line with our approach towards historical U.S. presidential elections. For example, we will remove videos claiming that a presidential candidate won the election due to widespread software glitches or counting errors. Uh, we will begin enforcing this policy today and will ramp up in the weeks to come. As always, news coverage and commentary on these issues can remain on our site if there's sufficient education, documentary, uh, scientific, or artistic context. Or in other words, uh, dear American public, because you are not smart enough to think for yourselves or to critically analyze information, uh, we have become concerned by the prospect that some of you might choose to listen to a viewpoint that we don't like or that contradicts the official narratives that we've been instructed to reinforce. Uh, but don't worry, sheeple, because we're a lot smarter than you and we are committed to protecting your fragile little minds from any type of information that might lead you to question what you're being told. Uh, so have no fears, because from this point forward, we will simply silence every oppositional voice from this platform so that you no longer need to worry about accidentally hearing any information that we don't want you to have. I mean, you guys, this is straight up Ministry of Truth kind of speech from 1984. And I'm not even talking about this particular election topic. You know, just the notion of silencing certain ideas from public access and the precedent that's being set by that. I mean, if you were some hedonistic, power-hungry, elite person, uh, how easy would it be to get away with all those dirty deeds if you also happen to have stock in a media system that would outright censor, silence, and ban any news article or YouTube video that sought to expose those very dirty deeds? I mean, how convenient would that be? Don't you wish you could do that? You know, hey, Tim, we caught you and a bunch of your friends doing a really bad thing. Oh, no, sorry, guys. Can't talk about that. You know, why don't you just go back to all that good stuff that you were saying about me before? <laughs> you know, I'm saying this is a public platform, you know, like the court of public opinion. Like, could you imagine a judge in court, you know, sitting there in his chambers with his little powdered wig and his big mallet gavel thing? <laughs> and he says, you know, OK, let's take a look at Exhibit B. And the defense says, actually, Your Honor, uh, you can't see Exhibit B. Uh, we threw Exhibit B in the trash because we didn't want for you to consider that exhibit. Well, let's just move on to Exhibit C, you know. Would that make any sense? Or, you know, the judge says, I hereby call this witness to the stand. Oh, no, no, you can't, you can't talk to that witness, Your Honor. You see, most of us agree that that witness is full of crap, so you don't even bother hearing him out. I mean, you guys, we're just, we're getting really deep into the sheep herd now. And whenever you leave it to somebody else to distinguish between what's true and what's misleading uh, for you, you're opening yourself up uh, to be deceived. Do you realize that the past, starting from yesterday, has been actually abolished? 
If it survives anywhere, it's in a few solid objects with no words attached to them, like that lump of glass there. Already we know almost literally nothing about the Revolution and the years before the Revolution. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book has been rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street and building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And that process is continuing, day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. I know, of course, that the past is falsified, but it would never be possible for me to prove it, even when I did the falsification myself. After the thing is done, no evidence ever remains. The only evidence is inside my own mind. And I don't know with any certainty that any other human being shares my memories. Just in that one instance in my whole life, I did possess actual concrete evidence after the event. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Freedom! Freedom! You know, one day my son is going to ask me about my political views. You know, my kids, they're young now, and I try to keep them far removed from all this nonsense uh, in favor of allowing them some time to just be kids and stay innocent, you know. Uh, but one day they're going to want to know. And for people like us who have discovered some of these controversial truths about this world, we're not going to be able to back up what we're saying when it comes to stuff like this anymore. Uh, we won't be able to pull up those same PDFs and articles and videos and photos uh, that when compiled together once painted a more accurate portrayal of reality than what we were being taught in school or seeing on TV. You know, and it blew our minds all those years back. Uh, we will not have access to that evidence for very long, and it's going to make it pretty difficult to wake people up. You know, and so your kid might say, Dad, we learned about 9-11 at school today. You know, do you remember when those two towers got knocked down in New York? You know, and you might say, well, actually, it was three towers that fell, you know, and they weren't knocked down. They fell directly into their footprint, like a controlled demolition. And you know your kid is going to fact check it or Google it or do whatever kids do in those days uh, to get answers about those things. Uh, maybe Google VR, you know, I don't know. Uh, but the point is that they won't find it. You know, they'll say, actually, Dad, it says here that only two buildings fell. And you'll say, son, I remember that day vividly. You know, look up Building 7. That was the third building. It was called the Solomon Brothers Building or whatever it was. You know, and he'll fact check that too with no results, you know, and it just goes down the line. I mean, do you think you'll be able to find and share Jason Burmes's classic loose change documentary 10 years from now? Or Bill Cooper's Mystery Babylon series? Or even any of my little documentaries on this channel? Uh, of course not. And supposing that the Lord doesn't come back any sooner, uh, when we're old people trying to educate the youth about these things, uh, it's going to come off more like a bunch of whacked out geezers babbling about nonsense. You know, because it's not like there's going to be an entire generation and who are all going to agree about the reality of how things were in the past. Uh, because even now, most people are completely ignorant about everything regarding these fringe topics that are now being systematically censored. And so if their kids were to ask about it today in 2020, you know, parents would be most likely to say, oh, that's right, Johnny, that's absolutely right. Two buildings toppled over on 9-11, you know. And if you were to say otherwise, uh, at least up to this point, we had access to the necessary resources to prove otherwise, you know, namely information on the Internet, you know. But what happens to a generation that is denied access to that information or to the presentation of any alternative viewpoints? And when you have an inquisitive and curious young man, you know, who's seeking to learn about the history and structure and origin of the system that he was born into, uh, but he's only able to research a narrow spectrum of specific claims uh, that only affirm and reinforce the government-sanctioned narrative of reality, you know, what then? That would describe Winston, the protagonist from Orwell's dystopian classic 1984, uh, which was published in 1949 and sought to warn society about the dangers of our near future if society were to continue treading blindly towards totalitarianism. 
And Winston lives in this terrible and oppressive society that is under constant surveillance, uh, demanding complete obedience from all citizens at all times. And Winston has an interesting occupation. He works in the records department for the Ministry of Truth. And the Ministry of Truth is almost like a metaphor for mainstream media. I mean, they're the authority behind what all citizens are expected to believe, accept, and to affirm. Uh, and Winston's job, more specifically, is to take historical documents and historical articles and to revise them and to rewrite them in a way that conforms to whatever the party narrative happens to be at that time. And another one of Winston's responsibilities was to remove every citizen who has been, quote, unpersoned uh, from the pages of history. Because in this society, when somebody defies Big Brother or commits some kind of terrible crime, uh, he would be unpersoned, which means that he would be secretly killed and then erased from history altogether without a shred of evidence remaining that such a person ever even existed. And Winston was the guy who has to erase these names and events from the official record. And so I guess what I'm saying here is that if Winston were here in 2020, uh, he would probably be an employee at YouTube, you know, or <laughs> any of these social media companies uh, that censor speech and deplatform people who don't espouse the official narratives. You know, I mean, that's not a very far stretch from the plot of 1984. Because free speech has been under attack for a long time. Uh, but with speech, there are some constitutional regulations in play. You know, like slander and libel is not allowed. And you can't use your speech to threaten or incite violence against somebody. Um, but what our Constitution does give us is the freedom to express our thoughts and views openly and honestly without fear of being in violation of any laws. Uh, but forget about your freedom of speech. I mean, that's already gone. Now it's on to freedom of opinion you know, or freedom of thought. And that brings us back to 1984, which covered the idea of thought police, whose job was to enforce penalties against citizens who were found to be guilty of thought crime. So if you've heard the expression thought crime, uh, this is where it originates from. You know, it's the idea of having an illegal opinion about something. So I kind of feel like I'm watching this classic story unravel around me. And I'm reminded of the old truther joke that 1984 was supposed to be a book, uh, not a blueprint. It, because it really is astonishing to see how closely that we're now treading towards that particular dystopia. Because just like in the book, our very history and identity is at stake here. And I get it that YouTube is a private company, you know, and that they got the right to regulate their platform however they want. And maybe that, you know, it's not like they're the only source of information out there. Uh, but when's the last time that you went to a bookstore? I mean, heck, they were already disappearing. And I'm sure that post pandemic, there probably won't be any surviving bookstores, you know, because come on, we don't even read books. Everything is online now. And public platforms like Facebook or YouTube, you know, for better or worse, have become like the commons of our time. And I'm not going to sit here and make a case for or against the whole private company rights thing. You know, I'm just saying that this is where we are and this is where we're going from here. So, fallen world, I'm pleading to you. You know, it's time to pick up your Bible, dust it off, or re-download your Bible app and start learning the truth now. Uh, because who knows how much longer we'll have till the Bible itself gets banned. Uh, you know, for all its homophobia and sexism and racism, you know, and all the other ridiculous accusations that have come against God's word in recent years. And I don't mean to speak in hyperbole here, but if this bill were to pass, would this uh, prohibit the sale of the Bible that teaches these things about sexual morality? Well, literally, according to how this law is written, yes, it would. Twitter gives Alex Jones the boot, the social networking site permanently banning he, he and his media company, Infowars. Now, the ban occurred after Jones insulted a CNN reporter during this week's social media hearings. Oh, yes, that's right. They are purging again, and this time, channels of previous CorbettReport.com guests like Josh Sigurdsson of World Alternative Media and Brian Christian of Last American Vagabond and Jeff Berwick of The Dollar Vigilante have been deleted along with Dan Dix of Press for Truth. Well, the ban has been applied to seven people, including Alex Jones, Louis Farrakhan, Paul Joseph Watson, who is Alex Jones' deputy, Miley Yiannopoulos, Laura Loomer, basically a large number of people on the far conspiracy theory spreading right, as well as Louis Farrakhan. Hey everyone, I want to cover this because it's always really hard to know when this happens unless somebody tells you. High Impact Vlogs YouTube channel has just been deleted, as you can see here in this tweet. And out of the 74 channels, mine in alphabetical order is number 34 on that list. Now the thing that's so shocking about this is that there's only a handful of these ch channels that are still left. Me, Richie from Boston, and Sargon of Akkad. I mean, the likes of Ron Johnson, Richie Allen, 
um, PK, PK Boston, From Death to Life, Eric Dubay, Defango, Jerome Corsi, A Plain Truth. I mean, all of these channels have been taken down. Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Richie from Boston. Actually, this isn't even what's up, YouTube. It's what's up, Minshew. It's Richie from Boston. And as of last night, my channels have been effectively shut down by YouTube. Hey, if you're looking for the SGT report on YouTube, it has been canceled. We don't have a First Amendment to so, so that we can talk about the weather. We have the First Amendment so we can say very controversial things. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. Well, I'm, I'm very glad I put you on the spot. <laughs> well, I'm great. But, I but you get my point. Speech. You get my point. It's like you're, you're doing what you should do, which is digging a bit to see what the hell's going on. So and that you, is what you should do. But I you're exercising you see, your freedom of speech to certainly risk offending me. And that's fine. I think more power to you as far as I'm concerned. So you haven't sat there and... I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Ha, gotcha. You have got me. You have got me. I'm trying to work that through time. my head. Yeah, yeah. It took a while. It took a while. It did. It did. Yeah. It took a while. We are not there, we don't got time left to spare to not care On the last day of November, swelling in ranks Went to chant down the mighty IMF and World Bank A gathering of people in peaceful assembly Onward to Westlake to disrupt the entry Walk along steady, riot squad ready to protect Every last dignitary's ass But this started when they herded us like cattle in a fence Protesters getting restless without an exit the American people know these names have to go. Fifty thousand deep, and it sound like thunder when I free pound streets. Yo, fifty thousand deep, and it sound like thunder when I free pound streets. Come on, y'all. Fifty thousand deep, and it sound like thunder when I free pound streets. Yeah, fifty thousand deep, and it sound like thunder when I free pound streets.